Hello, my name is Henry Enfrey, and this is a Godot 2D game development tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do basic AI. AI would be like when the player moves, the enemy follows the player or chases after the player. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make that happen. Now, before this tutorial, I pretty much already pretty much set up my scene. Here I got my player which I named Henry. So we're just going to go back to our player Henry's tab. And the first thing I'm going to do is change this to kinematic body. And I'm going to search kinematic, kinematic body 2D. The way that I got my sprite is I click this plus here and then I search for sprite in this box. It shows the sprite. You can click create or double click it. And then I hit click Henry again, click the plus, and then search for collision shape. 2D to get, get the collision shape. You can click create or you can double click it. I already did it so I won't do it again, but that's what you can do to get to this point here. Then I did the same thing with the enemy. I clicked the enemy, clicked the plus, search for sprite, and then I clicked the enemy again, click the plus, and search for collision shape. So that's how I did that. So now I'm going to go to the player tab and I'm going to add a sprite. I'm going to attach a sprite to this node here. So I'm going to click on the sprite node and I'm going to go and I'm going to search for a picture or visual representation of what I want a player to look like. So I'm going to click this box here, click load, and I'm going to use this PNG file that I made in paint.net before this tutorial. This is just a PNG file that I made and saved in my Godot assets folder. So I'm going to click this and I'll click open. So now we got our sprite. And next we're going to get a collision shape for that sprite. I'm going to click click collision shape 2d and go to this box I'm using a rectangle now I'm gonna resize that rectangle using these dots here it's hard to see the actual collision shape but these two dots outline where my collision shape would be okay so now we're done with Henry and I'm just gonna save Henry save as henry.tscn and I'm gonna do the same thing for the enemy go to enemy I'm going, to search, I'm going to change this to kinematic body. Kinematic body 2D. And then I'm going to uh, find a sprite. Click on sprite. I'm going to click this box. Load. I'm going to choose this PNG here that I made before this tutorial. Once again in paint.net. Then I'm going to click uh, find a collision shape. Let's do rectangle 2D. Then I'm going to resize that too. Okay. And then I'm going to save that as enemy. All right. All right. So then I'm going to go to this room and then I'm going to go ahead and save this room. Save as room. And this room is where our game action is going to take place. And we want to make it so that when we launch our game, we'll get this room here. So to do that, we're going to click project, project settings. Make sure run is selected and make sure room is in this tab. If room is not in this tab, you can click this folder here and uh, select room here and either double click it or click open. And then room should be in this tab right here. Okay, so now when we launch our game, we'll get this room here. Okay, so next we're gonna go back to Henry and we're gonna click on Henry and then we're gonna go to this panel and we're gonna add a script to Henry. When you add the script, make sure this top bar is selected. Otherwise, if you add, it, add the script to something else, your program might not work right. So select this top bar, select new script, henry.gd. Okay, so now we're in Henry's script. I'm going to delete all this stuff that's in here. And I'm going to paste in this code that I wrote before this tutorial. Now, now Henry again is a kinematic body. And this code extends the kinematic body. So make sure you have this written up here. Otherwise, your code won't work right. And then I set this vector2 function, which means vector2d. I set this vector2d2 2 2 function to this variable called motion. Then in this part, these are the controls, the arrow keys. 
remember, X means right and left, and Y means up and down. This says if a person presses the right arrow key, the player will move to the right at a rate of 100 pixels per second. The plus means going to the right. Likewise, if a person presses the left arrow key, the player will move backwards at a rate of 100 pixels per second. Usually mine's in computer programming means going back. And now we're in the Y direction, which means going up and down. This means if the person presses the up arrow key, the player will go up at 100 pixels per second. Minus usually means going up in computer programming, usually. And if somebody presses the down arrow key, the player will go down at a rate of 100 pixels per second. Plus usually means down in computer programming. Usually that's what these things mean, but in some engines and maybe some languages, the stuff means the opposite. But anyway, so all this means if the player presses the arrow keys, the player will move. Otherwise, else means otherwise, the player will not move. And I set my motion variable to a function called move and slide. This first motion that, that I wrote refers to the x direction, and the second motion that I wrote refers to the y direction. Okay, so now we got our player, and this is the player script. Now, we am going to go back to this 2D, and we're going to click on the enemy tab. And we're going to make sure this enemy tab is selected. Otherwise, if you select something else, our program might not work right. So make sure this tab is selected. And we're going to attach a script to the enemy now. So click this. Click this box here. New script. Enemy GD. And then I'm going to delete all this stuff that's in here. And I'm going to paste in this code right here. Now, once again, enemy, just like the player, is also a kinematic body. So I had to put this uh, kinematic body, extends kinematic body up here. Otherwise, if you don't have this, the whole code won't work. The whole game won't work. So this code extends this kinematic body called enemy. And I, I brought the player code into this enemy code. And the way I did this is I created a variable for the player. And I set the player as a parent. And then in these quotation marks, I put the node name, the node's name. See the node's name is Henry? So that's what I wrote here in this enemy code. So, and then just, and once again, I set this uh, vector2 function, or, or, or which, is, which is really means vector2d. I set this vector2 function to this variable called motion. And then down here, this says, if Henry is behind the enemy, the enemy will move in the left direction. If Henry's in front of the enemy, the enemy will move to the right direction. Remember, plus means going to the right, minus means going to the left. X means going right and left. And then in this Y section, Y means going up and down. So this next part says, if Henry moves up, the enemy will move up. Remember, negative means going up. And if the player moves down, the enemy will move down. Plus means going down. And then, again, I've set my motion vector to uh, uh, this function called move and slide. Motion means X. And the second motion part that I wrote is that Y. All that, most of this is just like the player script. In fact, what I, basically what I did was uh, copied and pasted some of the player script and just, uh, just uh, rewrote it so that it will work for the enemy. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is go back to this 2D, this part, and click on this room tab that we made earlier. And then we're going to add a camera to this room. So click the plus, the camera, the camera 2D. And then we're going to click this current on. Okay, so now our room is set up. And then now we're just going to add in the player and the enemy. Make sure the room tab is selected. Click the chain, click Henry, click open. Click the room again, chain, enemy. Okay, so now we got our items in the room. I'm going to move the player a little bit to the left so that we can see what's going on. And I'm going to do the same thing to the enemy. Move it, move it down so we get a clearer picture. Move it to the right. Okay, so now 
We got our room set up. Now let's launch our game and see what happens. Okay, see? The enemy's chasing the player. And that's what we wanted. Okay, so everything worked out successfully. Everything worked out good. And let's see what happens when the enemy finally catches up with the player. See, the collision shape won't let the enemy go any further. That works for all sides. So that, so that means our collision shape works pretty good, too. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you. And that's the end of this tutorial. Take what you learn in this tutorial and expand on it. Till next time. Thanks. Bye. <clears throat>